that the thing, the reason people come, for couples coming, is because they're having a lot of fights. It's almost always the same thing. They're not communicating. One person is saying something, the other person's getting defensive. They're not hearing each other. And they get caught up into a cycle which becomes a little negative. And we try to help them step out of what I call the negative dance so they can have better communication. And individually, people come for such a various reasons, can relate to wanting to be in a relationship, can relate to like problems with finances, to low self-esteem, those are the typical thing, anxiety, and they want to like get some relief, not only talk about it, but get some tools. I do a kind of therapy that's called emotionally focused therapy, where they learn skills and they under, un, get to understand their primary emotions beyond the anger and frustration that they usually feel and present with each other. Traditionally, it's said eight to 20 sessions is good. That said, I have some clients who might do four or five and decide it's not for them. That said, I sometimes work with couples who have ongoing therapy who feel that the need, uh, not the need, but the desire to have this kind of open dialogue at least once a week is great and I see couples for a year or maybe two. So it's really depending on your time and what you feel you're ready to work on and how you feel like it's progressing for you. I would say this is the same thing in individual. Though I have to say if people are new and they sometimes think, oh my God, am I gonna be in this forever? I would say you should try to commit to at least 10 sessions so you really know what's going on and how, what, the, what it feels like being in therapy. Well, ever since I began being a therapist, um, teachers of mine, supervisors talk about the importance of what's called a frame. And this creates a safe place in where there's a certain structure that clients know that they are coming to therapy usually once a week, around the same time, and that they know in this room, in this relationship that we have, there is strict confidentiality. I'm not going to tell anybody else unless there's any safety concerns for them or their loved ones. And it is a place where by consistently coming, knowing that there's a certain amount, there is confidentiality, that they could feel free to work on their innermost feelings, understand their innermost thoughts in a structured way. When people come for therapy, the emotional cycles that we get caught into where one person feels like, oh my God, this person doesn't love me. And the other person's like, oh, this person's too much. I don't want to talk. There's certain kind of cycles, which is called pursuer, withdrawer, demands, criticize and demand. There's certain cycles that almost 80% of couples get into. It doesn't matter who they are. These issues of vulnerability, lack of vulnerability, feelings of trust, lack of communication, it to me is universal. What i me of is the times that's uh, the couples therapy is contraindicated. Contraindications specifically, I would say, is when there's domestic violence. So one person doesn't feel comfortable to talk because they might be hurt. And, and second is if somebody else is having an affair. Not to say that, that's a, that you shouldn't come, but it turns out a lot of times if you're coming to therapy and you're not being completely honest and there is somebody else involved, then there's going to be a third pink elephant in the room feeling that won't be the most beneficial. When I feel like there's progress, there's nothing more beautiful, especially when I've noticed couples reaching, connecting with each other, sometimes for the first time in a long time, it's so rewarding. So is really the actual therapist. She's the one who decided that she didn't want to go to school, so I ended up getting the degree. And so she um, does the bulk of the work. She um, is cute and people seem to love her. She has a great personality and she's forever curious and hungry. <laughs>